Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Glad to have you here as always. Uh, today we're going to do part one of a two-part thing we're going to do. Because we're going to be talking about the T6 Jedi shuttle. And as I'm sure some of you know, uh, they just made a new one for the Ahsoka show. Uh, so I wanted to do this in two parts. That way we can focus on one and then move on to the newer one do sort of a side-by-side -side comparison uh, in the second part. So look out for that in a little bit once this one goes up. Um, as I said, this is the T6 Jedi Starfighter. This was based off the Clone Wars series, which is where they introduced this ship. Um, this came out in uh, 2011. I'm not exactly sure what uh, exact month it was, but it retired in October of 2012. So <clears throat> that's typically how they have uh, their waves of, of sets come out good for about a year and a half or so, uh, and then they rotate out. Um, this is 389 pieces. The set number is 7931, uh, back when they were still only in four digits. Uh, this retailed for $59.99. And uh, on the secondary market, like Bricklink and stuff, right now you can get it for anywhere between two to three hundred dollars. Is typically the price range. Some of them have them listed for four hundred, which honestly, not worth it. This uh, is a pretty cool set. First thing we're going to talk about really is the minifigures it comes with. It comes with four. You have Clone Wars. Anakin Skywalker, which comes in pretty much half of the... Let's focus. Come on. Anyways, yeah, he's got the Clone Wars face. I don't know if you can see it's a little blurry. Uh, it comes in like half of the sets they made back then. Uh, alongside Clone Wars Obi-Wan, which also Clone Wars face. I don't even see. There you go. Clone Wars face. He's wearing the clone armor. Uh, same as Anakin is here. Uh, also, very common during that time frame. Uh, then we have one that came out. It was unique to this set at the time. We have Sese Tin. He's another Jedi Master. He is the only one in here that has back printing. They just reused the ones they already had. They didn't put back printing on these. I don't know why. But he has back printing. He is also the Clone Wars, because, you know, he's a Clone Wars set. But he's got those kind of largish eyes and that unique headpiece there. And then, let's put that there. And then, unique to this set and the only one they've made is Jedi Master Shock T. Doesn't have back printing because it's redundant. Just got to. She's got a cape, so it wouldn't really matter. Really nice headpiece there, the uh, the Montrails she's wearing. Only set to come with a Shark T figure, which is kind of a shame. They could have done others. Um, but comes with four figures. This Anakin, since it was so prevalent in all the sets, goes about... Less than five bucks. You can find it for like two to three dollars. They are kind of old. These are from 2011. So cracking in the torso and the arms is kind of common. So if you can find a, a decent shape Anakin Skywalker, runs you only a couple of dollars. Less than five bucks. Obi-Wan made fewer of them. He's about seven or eight in good shape. So still under ten dollars. This S810 is roughly ten dollars. I, I don't know why he's so low. Um, it could be because they did a another version of him a little bit later. I believe it was maybe the next year where they, he had his own Starfighter. It was not a Clone Wars version of him, but it has the same head piece. Um, that could, of course, lower his price a little bit, but I would expect that to be a little bit better. And then the Shock T, she's about 50 bucks, so like 48 or so in good condition on Bricklink. Uh, makes sense. It's exclusive to this set. They didn't make her in any others. Um, I don't know if this is true, but I have seen 
that originally they were going to have these guys and Quinlan Voss. He's a really good character that they introduced in the um, Clone Wars series. A little bit of fun fact, he was actually a background character in The Phantom Menace uh, when they're going through the market on Tatooine and... Uh, he was meant to just be filler for the back, but George Lucas really liked the <clears throat> the look of the character and decided to flesh him out into his own actual character. And he becomes a really wild kind of uh, unorthodox Jedi who is very good friends with Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, he actually had a, a couple episodes in the Clone Wars series. Um, but at least last minute before they... Um, officially did the set. They switched him out for Anakin, Sol uh, Anakin Skywalker. Sorry, um, Not really sure why they did it. Um, I, for one, would have much preferred have a Quinlan Voss. Um, he did actually come out in the Republic Frigate set, which I have right there, and I'm looking forward to doing a set with that. It's one of my favorite sets. Uh, you have the Clone Wars series version of him, in the Republic Frigate. And then later on they did a re-release of the clone Turbo Tank with a non-Clone Wars version. And those are the only two versions of Quinlan Boss. But I'm going to stop talking about him because he's not important to the set. So we've got these characters. I'm going to put these out of the way. These are the Sessi Tin and the Shakti are actually pretty nice. And then you get kind of just the generic Anakin Obi-Wan. But, you know, you, you get what you get. On to the ship itself. So, it is kind of wide. You know, decent size for 60 bucks, especially back in uh, 2011. They weren't really making much detailed. Uh, we do have a couple um, decals, stickers. I think there's only five from what I can see. Here's the underside. It's not nearly as detailed as I would hope, but it is a playset. So you get what you get. I do enjoy the fact that they have along these edges the red bits coming along as sort of just ac accents here. And then the, the stripes, they don't really there. And a lot of red accents. It's, it's aesthetically pleasing. You got a nice large cockpit. Um, underside, it's kind of boring. Yeah, what, what do you expect? Uh, we have this main feature of this sh shuttle is the rotating wings. This is how they are in flight. And then when they land, they go flat. As I don't know if you can tell, but it is kind of a firm thing. It's like you move it and then you shake it. It doesn't really move. It kind of takes a little force. You've got this little gear down here that's just spinning a... Um, a post within the technicals there, and that gives friction, I think. Or it could just be this mechanism here. It's probably a combination of those. Um, not exactly sure why they have that little piece there. I don't have the instruction booklet with me. Uh, like I said, this is from 2011. It's in a box somewhere. Um, something you have to make sure you don't forget to do is put the landing gear down. Uh, up, down, I don't know what the orientation would be with that, but put it up so that you can go through it. So you can see there's, there's not a lot of clearance here. They did a decent job of matching the profile, but you still have this huge gap in here, which I wish they could have filled it a little bit more. And then you also have it along the cockpit here. That's not too bad, but you just get this, this weird gray strip right here. It's I don't know. And it's kind of just weird in the front. It's it's all right. Um, you can see here, and especially when it's up like that, those wings are not centered right. They're offset, and it's all because you've got these layers going up this direction here to get this nice, and then you don't have any layers over here. Um, I don't really care for that. could just be OCD. But, you know, it is what it is. It's for 2011. It's not bad. Um, I, I really enjoy how well it's able to stay in place. It's, I, I feel like that's 
pretty good feature. What I don't really care for is how honestly lazy this uh, landing gear is. I It almost feels like they designed the ship, they made a prototype, and then found out, oh, hey, this is very stable. We got to figure something out. And they just tacked that on. Like, it's not aesthetic at all. I mean, it's functional. It serves its purpose. But I don't It just... It keeps it from wobbling a bit, but it's just, it looks so out of place. You just have these random Technic pieces there. I mean, it is cool that they managed to get it to fold down. I guess that's all right. But overall, I do not like that. Um, it is quite tall there in the center. I mean, that follows the profile of the original ship design. And like engine here... You get the, the arches going all the way around. I like that. Um, you can see into it a lot. They could have done a little bit to fill that in. It just feels kind of lackluster. Like even on the top, you can see into there. Um, there's not a lot of play features here. You've got the wings that rotate. You've got the crappy landing gear um the cockpit doesn't even hinge open it's just stuck on there with studs here and a couple in there the cockpit itself is really lacking there's there's no details in there i mean you get you get a little control board but it's in the floor it's not even you know not even a control panel. It's it's in the floor. There's no seats. Um, you can fit two two characters in here. It's nothing spectacular. Um, and it's just it just clicks on there. At least you can't really tell that there's a gap right there. As you know. They do at least give you these side panels to fill in that gap, which I appreciate. But then you also have gaps here. And that's a big problem with some of the older ships. The cockpits just have huge gaps in them. And it kind of breaks the immersion, kind of. Um, we do have... I did not line that up properly when I put it on. But we do have a red uh, Republic insignia for the Galactic Republic Army. Also Navy. I mean, it was on their ships, too. Um, usually that's white, but it fits into this band, so it's nice. Um, and then the last play feature here is you got to have the wings up. You got flick fire missiles right here. And I do actually really appreciate how they've incorporated this design because it shoots out here, but the firing mechanism is the engines. You push here, flick fire comes out. And I feel that that is, for its time, pretty ingenious. You put it in there, and it seems pretty firm. You don't really realize it unless you know about it. Um, I, I really do appreciate that design because uh, a lot of times they'll just have, like, <clears throat> I know they've got the spring-loaded ones that launch the missiles. Um, they did a, a big... Big amount of, big amount, what am I saying? Uh, a large amount of time, they'll have the flick fires that you literally just flick them and they fire, which I don't mind those. They usually get them um, put in in reasonable spots, kind of incorporated into the design. But a lot of the, the ones in the last few years have just been these little stud shooters. Um, I don't know if I've got an example all right, right here, I'll show you these. I mean, these ones are like the gun versions, but they would mount these on stuff. Um, they've gone through a couple reads. Oh, here's here's a good example. Like this, little stud shooters popped in the side. They're kind of just bulbous and in the way. And I, I do understand that you have to have play features because this is, at the end of the day, a children's toy. Um... <laughs> despite what a lot of adults will tell you. Um, and, like, I get it. 
I, I appreciate the fact that they have to make it appealing to children and give them more playability, but the way that they're designed for the most part, they've kind of just been in the way, tacked on, bulbous and unappealing. Um, although in several recent sets, they have been incorporating them into the, the design really well um, and kind of hiding them and, and just making them look like part of the ship. So if you don't want to actually use them for their functions, they don't detract from it at all in any way. And that's a good example of it here from way back then is that they incorporated it into the actual design itself and it doesn't draw your eye away from it. Um, overall, I'd say this is a decent set. It's a nice display piece. You don't have a lot of white ships. There's a whole lot of grays. Um, a couple blues, some oranges. But overall, Star Wars ships are like gray and black. And white's usually a um, accent color. Unless we're talking about like the X-Wings and stuff like that. Uh, but overall, I think it's a pretty decent set. Um, I will be doing a part two, like I said earlier, of Ahsoka's T6 Jedi shuttle that just recently came out. That's a complete overhaul of design. Um, and I'll be making a video of that shortly after this. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And before we leave, make sure you do the YouTube thing with a like, comment, subscribe if you like. And I will see you on the next one. Um, I'll have links to my previous videos at the end. Uh, thank you for coming. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.